Today, I'm gonna to show you how to remove a bunch of unwanted objects from any photo in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me at flurn.com where we make learning fun. In today's video, we are continuing our object removal series to remove all kinds of stuff from our image and basically help you focus more on your subject. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. Here's our sample image. Don't forget, you guys can download this as well as the PSD file from this tutorial for free. Just click on the link down below. Let's create a new layer to start with. And I want to start by circling everything that we want to get rid of. So let's get rid of this big air conditioning thing up there. Let's get rid of this thing over here. Let's get rid of that thing over there. This thing on the door, all this. When you kind of start to add all this stuff up, you realize that there's just like all kinds of distractions in photos. I want to get rid of all this stuff here in the background. All this stuff is just kind of taking away from me focusing on my subject. Let's get rid of those things as well. So, you know, this is just life. There's all kinds of stuff that maybe you don't want to look at. <laughs> Here in Photoshop, you can get rid of it. So we're going to start by creating a new layer. Let's hit a new layer here. And I want to just start moving in and getting rid of some of these objects. Now, as you're going to see with a lot of this stuff, we have like relatively well-defined edges in a lot of these places that we need to keep intact. So when you're working with edges, the best tool for the job by far is the clone stamp tool. So let's go ahead and hit S for our clone stamp tool. Up here at the very top where it says sample, you want to make sure it says current and below. That's what's going to let you do this on a blank layer. So we're going to go ahead and grab right here again. Like I want to get rid of this thing, right? And I need an edge, but like right over here. Okay, boom. I have an edge that I like. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, sample this area, and then I have a little preview of what I'm going to paint. By the way, if you don't have a preview, just go to Window and then down to Clone Source. There we go. And then click on this Show Overlay button. That'll make sure you get a preview. So let's hold Alt or Option. I'm going to sample right there. And we're going to go over here and you can see I can just line it up with exactly where it needs to go. There we go. If you don't get it right, no big deal. Just hit Undo and try it again. There we go and go ahead and paint in there. You can see I still didn't get it right the second time around. Uh, boom, just try it again. Or sometimes what I'll even do is because I'm on a new layer, sometimes I'll even like try to get the majority of the job done and then just like move it in. But let's give it an option. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna just sample this and we'll just say I miss it. Like, oh man, I missed it. Uh, no big deal, you can actually just use your move tool. So grab your move tool and then just move it into place and you're good to go. That only works though if you make a new layer, okay? So just a heads up there. All right, cool. So sometimes when I'm doing the clone stamp stuff, I'll make a new layer like a bunch of times and then I'll just merge them back together by shift clicking my layers, hit Control command E to merge them back together. So let's try it. New layer, S for the clone stamp tool, Alt or Option to sample this area here. Boom, and bring it right to where it needs to go. And then just kind of paint away the stuff you don't want. Pretty nice, right? Alt or Option to sample. Let's go ahead and completely paint that in and repair that line. And then if it's a little bit too light or too dark, you can always come back in here with the clone stamp tool and clean this up a little bit more. There we go, fantastic. And you can change the flow of your clone stamp tool as well. Like if you wanna do like a less strong effect, you can change your flow to, you know, 20, 30%. It's gonna allow you to kind of like fade it in. Perfect, looking pretty good. Now here we have more edges, so I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, sample up there, and we're gonna paint this in right down here. Okay, just go completely over there, pretty cool. A Little bit more edge work, same deal. Just sampling right here along the other edge. So I'm just kinda of like following my edges as they go around my images, right? There we go. This stuff is really easy to do if you don't have any edges. Uh, but if you do have edges, it's still pretty easy. Just want to make sure you sample those edges and then kind of get a little preview of what you want to paint and go ahead and paint that over. Fantastic. There we go. Just sample down there. Get rid of this thing here. Pretty nice. Same thing over here. I'm going to hold Alt or Option up here. Just go ahead and paint this thing away. Sometimes you might have to hold Alt or Option and sample a couple of different times. That's totally okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and sample this and paint this thing away over there. 
Now, you'll notice sometimes it might start repeating the object again. That's why you're gonna have to sample and then paint one more time, okay? So right here, it's gonna just come start repeating that over and over again, okay? So what you wanna do in that case is, you know, get it to about the right place, go ahead and paint that over, and then stop before it repeats itself, and then hold Alt or Option, sample it one more time, and then go ahead and paint that in for the second time. So you kind of have to predict that it might start repeating itself because it's, it's basically, it's sampling all the layers, including the layer that you're painting, right? So um, eventually it's just gonna repeat. There we go. And if you have little areas that just repeat themselves, you can just sample and paint right over that. So basically all this is done with the clone stamp tool. And again, the reason I'm using the clone stamp tool is because it's fantastic for edges. It's gonna help me maintain all those edges in different parts. And then I'm just kind of going here sampling and kind of painting this in. Again, you can hit like shift two to bring your brush flow to about 20% and then sample here. And then this is kind of like clone stamping with a lower opacity. And it's really good for like blending things together again. Great. Now back up here, same deal. All right. So we're going to sample this area here where we have this nice line and paint it over right over here. Perfect. Again, sample right up there and paint this in. The reason I'm using the clone stamp tool over like an automatic tool, like we've used earlier in this series, is because I need the control. I don't want an automatic tool to like guess at what this edge might be because I've got so many edges I need to work with. I need to be able to dictate like, hey, this is, this is the edge I need. So if you're just working kind of like in the middle of a, you know, um, like undefined area. I'll show you in just a second. It's okay to use other tools like the healing brush tool or the spot healing brush tool, things like that. Like this thing, right? If we wanna get rid of this thing, I don't need any of these edges right around it to stay intact because there are no important edges. So for that, grab the spot healing brush tool. There we go. And paint over it. Boom, no problem. Mess it up, no problem again. See, sometimes the spot healing brush tool does okay with edges, but sometimes it just gives you unwanted results. So that's why you wanna go in with your clone stamp tool and kind of fix things up if you need to, or you can just do it with the clone stamp tool to begin with. There we go. Looks pretty good. That's kind of weird looking there. So clone stamp tool this, boom. Come in here and kind of fix that out a little bit. There we go. Fantastic. All right, now we're gonna come down here, do the same thing here. So let's hold Alt or Option, sample there. Go ahead and paint this because we wanted that little ramp thing gone. All right, there we go. This tutorial should be called, let's use the clone stamp tool over and over and over again. Um, <laughs> Cause that's what we're doing. There we go. Looking pretty good. And don't forget, you can always lower the flow of your clone stamp tool to kind of blend things together a bit better. There we go. All right, looking pretty good. I'm going to overpaint a little bit here and then just mask it back in. There we go. No big deal. And then we'll just put a layer mask on there and then paint black with our layer mask right over here. Nice and clean. All right. So all these things are going away. We're gonna create a new layer. I'm just gonna grab my spot healing brush tool for all these little like dimples and things like that in the floor because there's no edge here. The spot healing brush tool is the fastest tool for the job. Really does a great job. There we go. Just kind of painting over all these little things. We don't have to get rid of everything. I mean, it's, you know, it's outside. It, it wouldn't make sense if it was like a perfectly clean um, floor, but all of these like more pronounced distractions make sense to get rid of them because they just draw your eye down here and then instead of looking at your subject, you're looking at the floor, which I guess he's looking at the floor. So maybe that's what you want, but most of the time, that's not what you want. All right, there we go. Get rid of that little thing, this little thing in the corner. There we go. Just kind of looking around at every little thing that's distracting and trying to get rid of it. All right, so there we go. Even just for the floor, you can see this. Let's zoom in there. 
Here's our before and after. Doesn't take long, but you can make a big difference. So now this big area behind our subject, you could go in with the clone stamp tool, you could use a bunch of advanced tools, but because we have this wall here that's just this peach color, I'm gonna grab the brush tool and then just paint that in and then layer mask it. You're gonna see it's actually incredibly quick to do this. Let's go ahead and create a new layer, B for the brush tool. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and sample this color right here, okay? Now we're gonna choose just a large soft edge brush and I'm just gonna paint this in. And I know you're thinking, what, the brush tool? You can just use the brush tool? Yeah, you'd be amazed at the amount of times I use a brush tool for object removal because it does a great job and it's incredibly quick. Now I've painted right over top of my subject. Just grab a layer mask and then B for the brush tool. We're just gonna paint black on your layer mask on any areas you wanna hide this, right? So I'll just you know kind of paint it over here and then paint back white on my layer mask right up to the very edge. So the reason you do this, and I've said it a couple times, is because you want your background color to be really nice and consistent. You don't wanna just paint right up to the edge and then stop. That's kinda of like, um, like if you're doing a painting, you wanna like go ahead and lay down your sky. You don't wanna like stop the sky where the ground is. I'll give you an example here in just a little bit why, why I recommend doing the overpainting. There we go. And you just mask this back in and kind of just paint that in there. And if you need to, there we go. You can always click on your layer here. I'm gonna just right click and convert this to a smart object. Like if you wanna add a little noise to make it look more realistic, super easy to do. Just convert that layer to a smart object, go to filter, noise, and to add noise. And then I'm just gonna give it like 1% noise, okay? There we go. Let's just turn this preview off and on. I hope you can see it here on YouTube, but there we go, off and back on. 1% noise, just makes it look a little bit more like a photo. Hit okay. It's a smart object. You can turn this noise off or on at any time or change that noise. But that's the reason why we use the brush tool. Now, again, why do we overpaint? Well, let's just make this invisible just to see. If I were to grab this and then like try to paint it in and then just go like right, right to the edge, Okay, I'm gonna paint in and try to go like right to this edge here. Okay, and then let's grab another color and then like try to, you know, paint this in and then I'm gonna go and <laughs> grab another color and try to paint that in there at the edge. Okay, and then I try to go out and try to blend all these together again now. You can just see, I kind of have like a mess here. It's much better to just sample a color, like over paint the heck out of it, and then just mask it in. So you don't have like, you know, all those different colors trying to blend each other with small brushes. You just use one big brush and then mask it in wherever you don't want it. And even here, I didn't do a great, perfect job masking. No big deal. Just go in there and paint black or white on your layer mask and just fix up the mask a little bit. All right, there we go. <laughs> Fantastic, uh, looking pretty good, I gotta say. There we go, those don't need those. Let's just make sure we remove just about everything we circled, just gotta get rid of that thing there in the background. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and uh, yeah, let's S for the clone stamp tool. I'm just gonna sample this and go ahead and get rid of that little dark spot. It was really the thing that was kinda distracting and, and bothering me. So there we go clone stamp tool and I'm just lowering the flow a little bit so it's kind of like a faded clone stamp tool and that kind of helps me just like blend these things together again just a little bit better there we go that's much less distracting now perfect that there and you're good to go let's go ahead and we're going to group all of that together and you can see this really didn't take that long. Let's see the before and after. Huge, huge difference, right? Huge difference. I'm focusing much more on my subject now and all those distractions are gone. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget, you guys can download the sample image and the PSD for free on learn.com. Just follow the link down below. There are so many times when removing distractions from your photos can make a huge difference in focusing in on your subject. No photo shoot is perfect, and oftentimes there's so many things in your photo that you could do without, and learning how to remove these can create a huge impact on your images. 
your Flurn Pro membership includes this tutorial and hundreds of others. Join now on flurn.com. If you guys want to get more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. Thanks again, and I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.